Hey guys, how's it going? This is just another little experimental thing I thought I'd try out. Maybe you guys can just be listening to this in the background. But um, yeah, this is going to be a question I'll be tackling for this session. That's something that I don't really think has ever been thoroughly discussed, at least not to my knowledge. If you know, please post down in the comments and inform me. But the question I'll be tackling is... Out of the four nations from Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra, which are considered, or which would be, the strongest bender? Because obviously the Avatar can bend all four and is undoubtedly the, you know, strongest that isn't that much we know, especially from what we've seen. But like, on an individual case-by-case -case basis, which is really considered the strongest element? And I think there's, you know, cases to be made for each and every one. So we'll break it down nation by nation, and I'll give you guys what I think, who I think, is actually the strongest, and you might be surprised. So let's start off with the one, I think, that comes to everybody's mind off the top of their heads. That being the Ruthless Fire Nation, the element of fire. Because throughout the entire last Airbender series, they're built up as these bad guys as these you know inherently antagonistic people so not to mention that they you know completely wiped out an entire culture and were in the process of wiping out every other culture on the planet in subjugation and in attempts to supplant their own but that's neither here nor there basically what we have is it being built up that firebenders are clearly very strong. That's not in any question. You know, we see with Sozin's comment. By the way, spoilers, I'm assuming, but, like, I'll put a tag. But So, like we saw with Sozin's comment, comment, firebenders can become incredibly, incredibly powerful. That's no question. Uncle Iroh, Zuko, everybody, Azula, all the firebenders we meet are no... Um, no stranger to skill. That being said, however, it's like, it makes sense because firebenders, unlike with the terrible Shyamalan movie, don't need a source of fire to bend. They kind of bend the energy within themselves, and I'm guessing also, obviously, to an extent, they can combust the air around them to make the fire. That makes sense. And it kind of balances out with the, given the fact that Almost every other bender, water, earth, and fire, or water, earth, and air, are going to have their element in abundance around them in order to uh, bend. So it makes sense to balance it out that the Fire Nation has that. So we see throughout the show plenty of, ex of examples of how powerful firebenders can be. But are they the strongest? Let's take a look at another nation, that being the Water Tribe. And Again, it's probably it's the first example of bending we see in the show, and I think it starts off as, you know, we grow with Katara, we see her become an excellent waterbender by the end, and we see how powerful it can be too. But I'd say waterbending is probably, you know, not I love waterbending, I love watching it, it's beautifully animated, but I want to say it's on the, the lower end of the spectrum, just because there isn't, it's not as ironically fluid as some of the others, like, water can be counteracted fairly easily by the other elements, at least, I think. At least we see in the show that fire, enough of it can evaporate the water. You know, you put up a rock wall, not much a lot of water can do. Like, water is very dynamic, and it can be good for fighting, but I don't know. Overall, I think um, water bending is the weakest. Personal opinion, but then, whatever. Next is the uh, Earth Kingdom, or Earth Bending, and I think this is you know, obviously one of the stronger ones. Earth is, you know, if you take away the water, you are left with only Earth, and Earth is the most abundant element because of the fact that underneath all that ocean, there is still rock to be bent, and as we established also, clearly Toph and other Earthbenders are able to bend, quote-unquote, space Earth, or space rock, so it they're not limited in anything that they are allowed they they can bend. In addition, earthbenders are often seen as very strong, burly sort of 
Esque characters who are able to, you know, fight against anything that comes at them. So naturally, you'd expect them to be pretty powerful benders as well. And as we see, you know, Ba Sing Se was able to withstand, you know, many, many years of siege by the Fire Nation. So that leaves us with the Air Nomads. Now, and airbending itself. Now, and this is spoilers for Legend of Korra just coming up, but. I actually believe that the airbenders, that airbending is the strongest element. And I think, and I'll back this up, that is a very good thing that the airbenders were peaceful, nomadic people that taught nonviolence. Because if you think about it, airbending, you might say to yourself, airbending kind of gets, you know, screwed over a little bit in the, in the show not just because you know there's only one of them left but also throughout the entire series and into even legend of korra we learn that you know lightning is a subset of firebending being able to bend lightning we learn that bloodbending an incredibly powerful version of waterbending is gifted to especially powerful waterbenders and Toph invents metal bending, and later on, Bolin is able to lava bend. So, airbenders, it feels like, are just kind of given the cold shoulder. But I think that's almost the highlight, just how powerful airbenders can be. Because, again, spoilers, as we saw in Legend of Korra, Zaheer was able to practically kill Korra and did kill the Earth Queen through asphyxiation thanks to airbending. And he literally sucked the air out of the lungs. There's not a lot of stuff you can do to prevent that while bending. Furthermore, we see in season one of Legend of Korra how his name eludes me, I apologize, I'll do more research next time, but you know what I'm talking about, tried to bloodbend Aang. And he was successful at first, and then Aang went into the Avatar state, and he was helpless. Or, you know, the guy who was trying to bloodbend him was helpless to actually stop him, so... The Avatar State was able to overcome bloodbending, but as we see again in, in Korra, now this could be argued because she was poisoned, or whatever, but Korra was nearly killed by Zaheer through airbending, through being, the air being sucked out of her lungs, and I think Zaheer is there to kind of show us just how powerful an airbender can be when they don't abide by the basic peaceful nature that the airbenders that the uh, you know air nomads have come to teach and that we've come to know. So I think, honestly, though, that makes sense to an extent that the airbenders would be the most powerful because it would then make sense, it would make sense for the monks to teach peaceful and nonviolent methods or, uh, ma you know, mantra to live by. I apologize, I'm floundering over my words because they recognized how powerful of a you know advantage they hold literally being able to rip the air out of people's lungs so they decided against using this power for evil and instead decided to preach nonviolence so that the world would never be subjected to the horrors that would be an airbending army and as if you're wondering like as to why I think this further is that Imagine several airbenders being powerful enough to create the vacuum like how Zaheer did to the Earth Queen and Korra, like around their head to suck out the oxygen. Imagine if they did that on a much larger scale, sucking the oxygen around a single person. Well, if you're a firebender, you can't firebend because you, there's going to be no air left for you to combust. If you're a waterbender, well, tough luck, water boils in a vacuum, so the closer that gets to the harder it's going to be to bend. The only really shot you has it have is if you're an earthbender, but even then you're being asphyxiated. So bending is not your best ally in that case because you're dying and you can't really breathe. So you can't really bend if you're unconscious. So long story short, I think it's a very good thing that the air nomads were peaceful people. And I think partially the early founders of the air nomad society recognized their true power and potential and decided it'd be best to seal that potential away behind the guise of peaceful nonviolence. Because if they hadn't, 
I think we would have seen a very different uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, because it probably wouldn't have been Avatar The Last Airbender. It would have been Avatar The Last Firebender, or Earthbender, or Waterbender. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um, let me know if you like these, and if you want me to continue on with, like, speculative stuff like this. Uh, this was kind of impromptu, so maybe I'll have more scripted stuff in the future, but yeah. Maybe drop a like, hit subscribe, do whatever you want to do. I will see you guys next video.